So now we're on to the final challenge and what we're going to look at is chaining a bunch of methods together so we can filter down our results as well as running the exec function. So the first thing I'm just going to do is um, open the terminal in a new page because that will take absolutely ages to load up. So we'll just let that load in the background. And let's say from this collection here, we want to select all the healthy people or all the people that like salad. So the way I'd go about doing that is I say person.find and inside the object, we want favorite foods to contain salad. And again, this was covered in the find one video. Um, the way we would do this, it would we would put an object here and then we'd have the salad in an array like this. So this will select all the people that have salad in their favorite foods. And what we can do is we can execute the callback function inside this, like here. Or um, another alternate way to actually do this is we can just leave this with just the object and we can then call a method here called exec and inside it we can give our callback function. So we can once again do the error data like this and I'm just going to say if there wasn't an error um, we want to log the data. So let's just have a look at what this does. So if I run the example.js, we'll see what it comes out with. And we can see that we've got all of this data returned. So it's selected all the people that have salad somewhere in their favorite foods array. So we have all these results now. And the advantage of doing the ex exec method like this is the fact that we can chain or insert in other methods before it. So the first thing we're going to look at is the sort method and the sort method is used to um, specify the order in which we want to run in which we want our results to be returned and if we look in the docs page this is in the api query thing um, what we can do is call the sort method to do this and we do any of these methods before the exec method right here so i'll say sort like this and in the sort method what we can do is we can just give an object with the field and then like ascending, descending or their shorter forms or one or minus one. So if you want to sort these by ascending age, what we can do is we can say age and then give a string with, oops, age like this and we can give a string with ASC like this. So this is sort them by ascending age. So let's have a look at that now. So if, if I run this again, hopefully we should see that they've been sorted in ascending order by age and it goes from 16 all the way up to 62 here. And another alternate way to do this is that um, we can just do something like this. So we can say, give a string instead of an object and we can just do plus age like this. And hopefully what this should do is it should also just sort them by ascending order. So it should sort and age so if we just wait for it to run, um, no, that doesn't work. I think we might just put age here like this and then try it. Hopefully this should work this time. Yeah, we can see that it's done it by ascending age. And if we wanted to change the descending age, we'd simply put a minus in here. And if I run it again, it should be sorted by descending age. And yeah, we can see that that's happened. So we can do this as a string or as an object, but I'm just gonna stick to the object method because that makes more sense to me. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the limit. And what limit does is it just limits uh, the results we get back to a certain number of documents. So right now we're getting one, two, three, four, five, six results back. And say we wanna limit this to four results. Before the execution, after the sorting, what I can do is I can call the limit method and I can just put four, a number like this. So if we uh, restart this, hopefully we should see that it gets limited down yep, to just the first four results. And again, the sort has been applied. So it's the first four results with the ascending age. Um, the next thing we wanna look at is the select. And what select does is we can choose which fields we want to display. So again, we can call the select method here. And inside the select method, you can give a string of the fields that you want to display. So let's say we want to just display the name. 
we can just put select and then name like this. And if I save that and I run the script again, hopefully, yeah, we can see that just the name has been returned. So we have Yasmin, Tina, Javier, and Zach. But um, the ID gets returned by default anyway, and that's just something that MongoDB forces. So we can't really do much about that, but it's always useful to have this ID here. Um, an alternate way to do this is we can put a minus and then put what we want to exclude. So if we want to exclude just the age from this, we can just do minus age like this. And then if we wanted to do fav exclude the favorite foods as well, we can do favorite foods like this. But I'm just gonna stick to the age for now. And if I run the script again, hopefully what it should do is, yeah, we can see that the age field has been excluded. But you can only do this one way or another. So you can use minus to specify what you don't want, or you can just type in what you do want. And I'm just gonna stick with the name and age here. And again, if I run that, we can see that now I have the exact results I want. And all I wanted was a name and ages of people that like salad that are sorted in ascending order by age and I've limited that to the top four results. So this method chaining allows us to do more powerful filtering on the data that we get back. So now let's look at the challenge and what they want us to do is in this query chain function here they want us to find all the people who like burrito and then sort them by name, limit the results to two documents, and then hide their age. So the first thing we want to do is find all the people that like burrito. So again, on the person model, I'm going to call the find method. And inside this, um, I'm going to give the favorite foods array. And we want the favorite foods to contain the burrito entry. So we'll just put all here. And this is like the favorite foods thing that we looked at in the find one. And we can just put the food to search here. And what this will do is it'll find and retrieve as an array all the entries that contain this food to search or burrito in their favorite foods array. Now, the next thing it wants us to do is to, let's have a look. Um, sort them by name. And I assume this is name in ascending order. So what we can do here is just put sort and then give an object and we want the name to be in ascending order like this. Next thing it wants us to do is limit the results to two documents. So we can call the limit method on this and we can simply put two here to limit to two. Um, the next thing it wants us to do is to hide their age. So we want to call the select method for this and one way to do this is put name and favorite foods like this. But the better way to do this, since we're just excluding one field, is just to put minus age like this. So we have all of that now, and now we're ready to execute. So we've done all the filtering we need. So we can call the execute method, and again, it's a function that takes in an error. And the data this time, I guess, is a filtered results. And once again, if there was an error, we want to console log the error so we can find out what happened. Otherwise, um, what we can do is we can call the done function again. And this done function takes in an error and the data. And the error this time is null because this only gets executed if this error is null. So we want to give null here. And what we want to do is then give the data, which in this case is the filtered results. And what they'll then do is in the um, server.js, it will um, um, resolve this data into JSON and they'll use that for marking. So that should be everything we need to do here. So just to summarize again, this selects all the people with burrito in their favorite foods array. It sorts them by name in ascending order. It then limits it to just two documents and it removes the age field from those documents. And then what it does is, if there was an error in executing any of this, it'll log that error. Otherwise, it'll take in this filtered results, which is what we want, and it will give it to the done function to be marked. So what we can do now is just share the app. So we can click share and then live app. 
and we can copy this link and paste it here and hopefully that should work. And yeah, that was the final challenge. So you can go ahead and submit that and that's the end of this course. Really useful, I think.